Hello everyone, it's Luke from the My Gardener channel here with another episode for you today. I am so glad to finally be out in the amazing sun. It is beautiful out, it's 72 degrees, I cannot complain. So what I wanna do today is I just wanna bring you all along for a super quick episode on the importance of refertilizing your perennials. Now this is a mistake that I see so many people making that I just wanted to make a video of it so that I can spare anyone else from making this mistake because it really does affect not only the harvest but the health of the plant. And so what I wanna do, I'm gonna bring you in, I wanna show you these beautiful strawberries we transplanted last year. They're looking great, they're popping up and they're, uh, cause of this warm weather, they're getting ready to put on some flowers, hopefully, and uh, then obviously some fruit. So what I wanna do is I want to uh, just bring you in so I can show you them and then I'm gonna show you kind of how I fertilize and kind of the importance of it because I think it's just a practice that not enough people do and they assume that the soil that's uh, there is going to kind of sustain them magically for the remainder of their life and I don't know uh, I don't know of a bigger mistake that you could make because strawberries specifically are some of some of the heaviest feeders but I mean you can look at anything from uh, green globe artichokes to asparagus to rhubarb any of these perennials that you grow even fruit trees and and uh, fruit shrubs they're they're perennials and they're going to use up just about as much but because we have strawberries here we're going to talk about strawberries specifically but it really will apply to just about anything so all right come on and check this out all right so we got some beautiful strawberries here in fact you can start to see they're they're actually wanting to form some more flowers and more leaves here which is great we just want to do is we just want to kind of clean them up a little bit i'm gonna i'm gonna rake all the the old leaves and debris all the old runners that are dried up just give them a nice rip out clean it kind of clean things up a little bit and really get your get your bearing for each individual plant here so we're gonna clean them up there we go get all the leaves around so we can really see our individual plants here when we do that uh, which helps because what we're going to do next is we're going to um, we're going to fertilize around each plant so now what you want to do is you want to take your fertilizer choice i'm using trifecta plus because that's just what i use it's great for your perennials because it has both endo and ectomycorrhiza in it and that's going to really benefit the root system it's going to uh, attach and they create a, the the fungi creates a symbiotic relationship with the perennials and really helps them because perennials specifically have a very aggressive root system and they need to take up all those nutrients in the water and uh, the minerals so that they can have a healthy root system and the fungi helps them do that and that really helps them kind of survive the winter um, plants that don't survive the winter typically have a very weak root system and they freeze and they just don't have enough energy to make it through so the um, the way to increase your success at having them come back in the spring is to fertilize them with something like that also like I said, the strawberries specifically are super heavy uh, feeders, and what they're gonna do is they're gonna use up those nutrients in the soil within the first year. Then it's slowly going to start kind of being depleted even more every single year. And if you don't fertilize them, they're going to eventually stop producing. They're not gonna be lush green. Look at these, all these are absolutely beautiful. Um, and uh, we're gonna keep them absolutely beautiful. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to give them about I'd say two tablespoons around every plant and just kind of sprinkle it around every plant you can do the same thing with a combination of blood meal and bone meal um, but you're not going to have all those trace minerals that are found in trifecta you're not going to have the beneficial uh, bacterias and the fungi and then all we're going to do is we're going to rake this in and this is how I always suggest applying fertilizer is to apply it to the top one to two inches and then work it in with your hands or a shovel or a like a little rake or something like that and just work it around the base of the plant right around the crown and what that's going to do is it's not only going to be right there where the nutrients are needed but also when you water the nutrients are going to go down into the root system and it's going to feed the entire root system and you're not going to damage any of those roots because a lot of times people the, the other mistake they do is if they do fertilize great you're you're not leaving your soil barren but they try to dig it in and they use a shovel and they try to turn the the fertilizer in and that couldn't be a bigger mistake because the, you're damaging all those roots that were that are built throughout the last growing season to get the plant to where it is now so you don't want to you don't want to damage any of those roots that's only going to stress the plant out and set it back from fruiting and and uh really doing its thing so that is all we do 
and now we're just going to give it a good watering in and we're going to be set and it's going to be done for the rest of the year. It's really that simple. You can fertilize and I typically recommend fertilizing as well in the fall, but that's going to be a video for the fall and we're going to talk about that later on. So I'll see you uh, in the same subject around, uh, you know, October-ish. Cool. So there you go, there is a super simple guide on fertilizing your perennials for springtime. Now I highly encourage you to do this. Let me know in the comments box below if you've done it and the results that you see. I think that the results honestly speak for themselves. And one thing that I wanted to add before I close is that it's very, it's, it's very deceiving that when you see the green growth coming up in the springtime, you say, oh, they must be fine. They're nice and green. They don't show any signs of yellowing or anything that might be a nutrient deficiency. I'm not gonna fertilize. And I think that's probably why most people don't fertilize. But what I wanna stress is that the nutrient deficiencies are shown later in the season because the plant will actually store that energy in its roots. And so it's kind of like setting the clock back to last year where you actually had the nutrients. And the nutrients might not even be in the soil, but uh, when the, the plant grows, it uses that, that energy in the rhizome and it grows out, it leaves out, and that's when you get all that green growth. You say, oh, everything's great. And then once it uses up that energy that was stored from last fall, that's when you start to see the yellowing of leaves coming after. Some of the brown yellowing, um, even red leaves from like a phosphorus deficiency, stuff like that. So hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you all learned something new. And I highly recommend you growing big or going home. I'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.